The Golden State Warriors are honestly heading into a pretty uncertain direction for their franchise. And by that, I mean absolutely no one knows what's going to happen, including the GM. Because right now, they have a 34, 35-year-old Steph Curry. He's turning 35 this year. And they also have a 21-year-old Jonathan Kaminga. And a few second-year players who have played absolutely out of their minds and seem to be the future for this team. But at the same time, they do have an all-NBA first-team player who literally carried their team to a championship. And at the same time, they were dealing with re-signing Clay Thompson. Will he leave? Will he go? They're dealing with all the Paul George trade rumors and stuff like that. And honestly... It's just very unclear what they're going to do. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking down what's next for the Golden State Warriors and how they will be back. They will be back to take over the NBA. If we look at the 2023-24 Warriors roster, it's pretty obvious that this team is just a medley of different players and the Warriors didn't exactly figure out what to do with them. And that's evident in the fact that they didn't even make it past the play-in tournament. I mean, you had Steph, Clay, Draymond, Chris Paul, Andrew Wiggins, who are all five players who are not, not particularly old, aside from Chris Paul, who's at the end of his career, I would say. But they're aging, and they're aging pretty quickly. We all know that the NBA kind of has a curve. I mean, it's going to be around when you're 24 through 28, really good players their prime can last all the way till they're like 31 32 like Steph's did and then you have like exceptional like one of a kind talent players like LeBron whose prime literally just lasts forever but the Warriors don't have that in Draymond they don't have that in Clay. they definitely don't have that in Chris Paul who was not that good of a player for the team this team so what do they do I mean Wiggins he's been horrible for seasons and the war the Warriors knew that this entire season, and that's why he was being played less and less. However, if you do look at Pajemski, you do look at Moses Moody, Gui Santos, Lester Quinones, Trace Jackson Davis, um, Pajemski Kaminga, those are all extremely solid young players who they provide hope for the franchise because while you have the old guys aging, you have the new guys coming in. And this is exactly the plan that the Warriors did have last season, that is. They had the two timetables plan. They had that with Pool too, but obviously Pool's gone now. And you know, they just had they just had that entire thing that they thought would go great. They thought that they could still compete Honestly, if you think about it, last year they were much better than the 2024, 2023-24 season. Because in the 2022-23 season, they at least made it to the second round and put up a fight. This season, they didn't even make it past the play-in. But, I mean, frankly, I don't think that this team will be able to continue to compete as long as this is the current roster. And if you look at the payroll... This is when it becomes really, really worrying. Because while you do have some players on cheap contracts, such as Trace Jackson Davis, he was, of course, the 54th pick in the draft last year, which makes him a great bang for his buck. He was one of the best rookies this entire year. I would say he's a top 10 rookie from that class. Then they signed Dario Saric on that two-year deal. It was an okay signing. He's only $2 million a year, but th I mean, that's not too bad because while he isn't a part of this Warriors core, either of the two timetables, he just, he's a contributing player. You need to have those on rosters. But then you have Pajemski at only $3 million a year, Moody at only four, Kaminga at only $6 million a year. That's an absolute steal. But as you start looking at the main guys, you can see that this Warriors roster is under a lot of pressure to win now because they are absurdly, absurdly expensive for how good they are. For, I mean, I don't want to say it in a mean way, but they are not good enough to be warranting this amount of money. 
Looney is being paid seven and a half million a year. GP2, who literally plays about 30 games a season, no disrespect to him, I absolutely love the guy. He's a phenomenal player, but he just can't stay healthy, and you've got to feel bad, but at the same time, 8.7 million for someone who'll barely play is not a good deal. Draymond being paid 22 million a year, Wiggins 24 million a year. Andrew Wiggins, $24 million a year for someone who literally can't put the ball in the basket to save his life is an absolutely ridiculous and undeserving contract. Then you have Chris Paul, who they obviously traded Jordan Poole for him to kind of contract dump. But I mean, last season they paid him $30 million. That's a lot of money. Then Clay. <sighs> Yeah, we all know Clay's contract. I mean, I feel like Clay's contract is actually a bit more interesting because he wants the max once again. And he already got a max and he didn't live up to it at all. He was injured for 941 days. Yes, that's right, 941. I'm pretty sure everyone's seen that documentary from Den Double D Worth. Um, but. 941 days being injured out of a four-year contract and still being paid 40 million a year and then asking for more <sighs> jeez it's ridiculous then of course you do have Steph Curry garnering 51 million dollars a year which is an absurd amount for a 36 year old but at the same time it's Steph Curry he deserves that money and we all know that he does but the rotation is it, it just doesn't look good even though i just went through all those solid seeming players they really just don't mesh well together i mean for the starting lineup of course you have steph andrew Wiggins, draymond green trace jackson davis and clay thompson second unit cp3 gp2 kaminga Pajemski, Moses Moody, Andrew Wade, I mean, one of those players. Honestly, it's just unclear who the top five guys on this Warriors roster is, and sometimes that's good when you have a lot of talent. But the Warriors don't have a lot of talent. The only really good player, the only player on two players, I'll say, actually, I'll up that to four. The only four players who I believe are actually important to this team and will help us win in the long run is going to be Steph, Draymond, Pajemski, and Kaminga. You can maybe throw Trace Jackson Davis in there. You can maybe throw a few other guys. But apart from that, this team just it can be completely blown up. And if it does, it'll probably end up better than what it is. To sum it up, the Warriors are just married to this old roster. They're married to the old big three of Clay, Steph, and Draymond, when we all know that they're a bit too old to perform as they once did and win the NBA Finals. I mean, not only that, but the talent around the league is crazy right now. Like, look at a team like the Celtics. They have eight solid players who can be in the starting lineup every single night. The Warriors just have to do better and I'm not really sure what they do this offseason. Like the video if you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.